When it comes to investing, I personally look for safe, solid investments with a long track record that offer not only growth, meaning that the investment value should increase over time, but also investments that offer large dividends to use the consistent cash flow to reinvest into more dividend paying stocks or use the cash for bills or life expenses in the future. But in this video, we are going to go over what maybe could be the potential perfect portfolio blend by combining two very popular ETFs that not only offer massive growth, but also a huge amount of consistent cash flow on top of that. Now stick around, drop a like down below and subscribe for more future content like this. So the portfolio build that I'm talking about is to invest half in SVOL or the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF and the other half into the popular Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF known as SCHD. Now combining something like the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF that offers a massive dividend yield of around 17.15% and that pays out monthly consistent cash flow. But by combining it with the SEHD ETF, which also pays a nice amount of dividends, around 3.78% really in 12 months, but maybe even more importantly, has seen some nice growth over time, up 178% on the max time frame. Now, before we go any further into this idea of combining SVOL for massive income and the SEHD ETF for, for some growth along with income, let's dig a little bit deeper into both the ETFs, starting off with SVOL. Now heading over to the Simplify ETF's website, it says Simplify Volatility Premium ETF seeks to provide investment results before fees and expenses that, that correspond to approximately one-fifth to three-tenths, the inverse of the performance of the VIX index. They also say on their website, we believe many traditional sources of income are failing to meet investors' needs in today's low-yield environments. SVOL aims to provide an attractive income stream and source of diversification while seeking to avoid risks inherent to other income producing asset classes. The fund's short VIX positions provides investors an optimized exposure for monetizing the premium in the VIX future market. A modest option overlay budget is then deployed into VIX call options to help protect against adverse moves in the VIX. So simply put, what this ETF does is it uses options and shorts the volatility index, but then also buys a small amount of call options just in case their main trade heads for the worse. Now looking a little bit deeper into SVOL, it's currently sitting at around 400 million in total assets, which is honestly a pretty good size for a more alternative ETF like this. Now this ETF does have a pretty massive expense ratio at 0.66%, but with these sort of ETFs with this sort of management, it's sort of to be expected. And speaking of income generated so far, this ETF has paid around 26 cents per share per month, 35 cents per share per month, and then pretty much right along that range. But on maybe some more negative news, there has been the last few months of payouts that are a little bit lower at 30 cents per share per month. Now that's down from the 32 cent monthly payout that SVOL has seen over the past, I would say six or seven months. But even with anywhere from say 27 to 30 cents being paid out on a monthly basis, and the fact that this ETF has a pretty stable share price, that would annualize out to around a 14 to maybe 16 or 17 percent yield which i personally would be very happy with now another thing that i actually really like about the simplify volatility premium etf is the fact that it has a very low beta of just 0.42 percent now if you're not aware beta is a measure of a stock's volatility in relation to the overall market and it's honestly sort of ironic that svol does short the volatility index and itself has a very low beta by definition the market such as the s p 500 index has a beta of one and individual stocks are ranked according to how much they deviate from the market. A stock that swings much more in the market is going to have a beta above one, and a stock ETF that trades within a smaller range is going to have a beta of less than one. Now, of course, every investor has their own sort of threshold with what they're comfortable with, but for me personally, I like to have most of my stocks and ETFs in my portfolio at sort of a low beta. I currently have over seven figures invested in the stock market in tons of different stocks and ETFs, and honestly, the less that the portfolio swings on a daily, monthly, or even yearly basis at this point, I'm definitely in favor of. So now that we dug into SVOL, let's dig a little bit deeper into the SCHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF for those that might not be all that aware of what this high quality ETF has to offer. Now this ETF has a very simple objective. It's to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses, the total return of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, and we are going to go deeper into this index in a minute here. Also some highlights, a straightforward low cost fund offering pot potential tax efficiency, the fund can serve as part or the core of a complement in a diversified portfolio. Now this fund tracks an index focused on quality and sustainability in dividends, but SCHD is currently trading around $70 per share. And even with that being said on the max time frame, this ETF is up 171.59% and that's not including dividends. 
Now, even though ETF growth is, of course, very important, also very important, maybe even equally as important, is the actual ETF holding breakdowns, which stocks are going to be within the ETF, and if or if not, these companies are strong. Now, the holding breakdowns are mostly made up of industrials at 17%. Then next comes healthcare, financials, consumer defensive technology, energy, consumer cyclical, communication, basic material, and utilities. So this ETF is highly diversified with around 100 different holdings, some of the top companies being things like Amgen, AbbVie, Pepsi, Merck, Chevron, Coca-Cola, Verizon, Texas Instruments, Pfizer, and Broadcom. Familiar companies that have been around for a while, that have been paying dividends and raising their dividends pretty consistently over time, and companies that are overall pretty stable. Now, another thing that's obviously very important for most investors out there, especially for investors that want cash flow along the way, along their investing journey, to use the cash flow for either some bills or living expenses or whatever, or maybe to use the cash flow like I personally do, to reinvest into more shares of things like SCHD, or maybe even other ETFs or other stocks across the market. So dividends, in my opinion, are very important, and they are important to many investors out there. So SEHD has a trillion 12-month dividend yield of 3.66%, which is relatively very high considering the amount of growth that this ETF has had, but maybe even more importantly, and, a, and another very important aspect of picking a one-size-fits-all ETF is the dividend growth rate. So the dividend growth rate is basically how much a dividend has grown over the last 12 or so months, and SEHD has had a 5.7% trailing 12-month dividend growth rate, which means the dividend has grown quite a bit just over the last 12 months. But keep in mind, if you zoom out a little bit, SEHD has had 11.44% over the last three years. Over the last five years, 13.69% dividend growth, which is absolutely outstanding and an 11.11% over the last 10 years. Now, to see this a little bit more visually, let's look at SEHD's dividends that the ETF has paid historically. So to give you an idea, back in 2011, this ETF was paying 12 cents per share per quarter. The next quarter after that was around 14 cents per share per quarter. Then it bumped up quite a bit to 21 cents per share per quarter. Around 10 years ago, SCHD was paying anywhere from around 23 to maybe 25 cents per share per quarter. Fast forward 10 or so years, now this ETF is on a consistent basis, paying 50, 60, 70 cents almost per share every single quarter which means that investors that have been holding onto this ETF in theory for the last 10, 11, 12 years are now getting paid almost three times as much on a consistent basis quarterly. Now, you might be asking, well, why is dividend growth so important to me? And why is that really a metric to pay attention to? I think for one, an obvious reason is the fact that inflation has been very, very high over the past few years. So it's given us a really honest look at what potentially could happen in the future. And if inflation is anywhere from, say, 2 to 3 to 4 to 5% per year, this means that if you own an asset that's continuously paying you more and more in dividends, you will most likely, at least in theory, be okay. Because the cash flow that you're getting paid consistently is going to at least somewhat stay with or hopefully beat the rate of inflation. So now that we dug a little bit deeper into the SVOL, the Simplified Volatility Premium ETF, as well as SCHD, and we're on the exact same page when it comes to how these ETFs work and what they each have to offer. The idea of combining something like SVOL that offers a massive dividend yield and combining something that's a little bit more stable and has a more consistent track record like SCHD is kind of a different sort of investment strategy that I think could be the perfect investment strategy for those investors out there like myself that favor growth over the long term but also want some cash in the form of dividends monthly from something like SVOL. Now, of course, just because I use this matchup, the SCHD ETF and SVOL, does not mean that this is going to be the perfect matchup by any means. For the obvious reason that SVOL, for example, has not even been around all that long, we don't really know exactly how it's going to perform in the longer term because we just do not have that much data yet. But that being said, I do think that combining something that has some growth potential, like SCHD, for example, along with a different sort of investment instrument like SVOL, and keep in mind there's plenty of different ETFs out there that do similar things to this, I think this could definitely be a potential good portfolio makeup for, for those investors out there that not only favor growth over the long term, but also want some cash in the form of dividends today. But now I want to hear from you guys down below when it comes to a portfolio that's not only growth centric and not only income centric. If you had to put two ETFs together, which two would they be to make up the perfect portfolio for what we're looking for? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by and if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.